All right, guys. So if you're in the coaching space or if you are wanting to get into the coaching space, I'm going to share with you a very interesting insight in this video that I've kind of been able to process myself um, and been able to make a fuck ton of money with. Okay. So if you are someone who wants to get into the coaching space or is interested in learning, watch this video with me because I'm going to show you why this specific market selling booty programs to rich moms and making $50,000 a month is something that a lot of people don't think about, for example, in terms of niche marketing when they actually get into any sort of coaching space. They're just like, oh, I'm going to help anyone with anything, um, which is actually the wrong method. So stick with me here. I'm going to kind of run you guys through um, some pretty much <coughs> unique insights that I came across that I wanted to share with you. Okay. So I came across these two guys online um, on Instagram and they're pretty much, it was, it was this guy first, he calls himself the booty doctor. <clears throat> and it may actually come off kind of comedic, like to a lot of people of, oh, he's just helping people build their booties and all that sort of stuff. But my prediction is that the people who niche and hyper niche over the next two, three, four years are going to crush people who don't have any sort of foundation in any sort of niche okay so prediction these guys who are who are booty doctor for example selling booty programs to you know ladies who are willing to pay a thousand two thousand three thousand six thousand dollars a fitness program these people are crushing people who are just helping anyone with anything you know what i mean right so my prediction is hyper niche fitness markets with trend will explode okay so if you even look up booty program online um you pretty much have not a lot that comes up there's like the booty king there's build a like there's not that much that comes up um but on instagram and social platforms this is exploding like every girl wants to have a big ass you know you have these hyper sexualization on these apps and every girl wants a big ass right and you know you have these divorce you know these these moms who are divorced <laughs> and they, they want to get back in the gym and get back at their husband type of thing. So hype, my, my prediction is pretty much hyper niche fitness markets will explode. The reason I'm showing you this specific market of growing your booty, okay? The reason I'm showing you this is because it's hyper niched. And it's also like not a lot of people are doing it, right? So if you're a fitness coach and you're helping anyone with anything, I'm just saying that maybe this is a good market to potentially look at, okay? Because I've been exploring this um, market a little bit over the last little bit because there's trend. It's so niched. The people who are in that market are, they, they have money. So it potentially could be a good market. Okay. So I'm going to actually tell you now why <coughs> some of the, some of the, some of the thesis of how to actually select proper markets, um, because there's thousands of markets that are like this, that are just sitting and waiting for people to jump into it and make millions with. Okay. So pretty much the, the biggest unique insight that I kind of came across was your market actually determines the biggest portion of your success. Okay. And this is a lot for people to deal with or cope with, but, um, people are like, Oh no, it's my sales ability or, Oh no, it's my, um, it's my offer. And yes, although those do have a play in your success, the biggest portion is your market. Okay. So let me give you an example. Let's say you, you know, you, there's, there's, um, a, a girl, for example, and every day she gets approached by a guy. Okay. Every day she gets approached by a guy period. Okay. It doesn't matter if you come up and you're the most charming guy. She's just been approached so many times. She's getting numb, right? The market is saturated. Okay. There's a lot of competitors. Okay. So pretty much the biggest, the, the method to actually select proper markets is you have to select a very small niche market. So Sam Altman, the founder of ChatGPT, OpenAI, um, he said, you have to find a small market in which you can get a monopoly and then quickly expand. What he means by this is <clears throat> what most people are doing is they are coming in like this. Okay, so they are unspecialized as hell. So if this is the fitness market, this outer circle, they're coming in and helping a mom who wants to lose weight, a dad who wants to lose weight, a kid who wants to build muscle, a guy who wants to do a powerlifting competition, a grandma with arthritis, a grandpa with lower back issues, right? If they're coming into the circle and they're helping anyone with anything, okay? And it's just like, I help anyone do anything fitness related, period, <coughs> okay? What Sam Altman says is you find a small market, then you can quickly expand, okay? So 
the specialized coach instead of this unspecialized coach loser, the winner archetype pretty much picks a, so if this is the fitness market, let's say that this is a niche within the niche, then a niche and then a niche. So like fitness, let's say um, middle-aged people who want to gain muscle um, and increase testosterone. I don't know. I'm just making this up. Okay. So what they do is they select this little green circle and then everything else is is sublimated. It's it's obsolete to them. They don't even worry about it. Okay. And what they focus on doing is dominating the circle. And then they go to the next circle, the next circle, <laughs> and then the next circle. And then before they know it, they have a pretty large focus of that market. Okay. Because pretty much what happens, <coughs> pretty much what happens is if you just come in, like you may, may you may watch this video and be like, oh my God, this is not bad. You know, there's a lot of people who are making a lot of money just kind of helping people with fitness. Like I know there's one guy making 20K a month, you know, this sort of stuff. Um, the only problem with this is it's a spiral effect, okay? So what happens, let me just shrink my head a bit. What happens is number one, you're gonna have a harder time getting clients. When you're calling out a specific person, that specific person will respond, okay? So if you're just coming in and posting fitness information, you're going to get not as many people as if you're posting specific information for specific people. Okay. Let's say hypothetically you're at a bus stop. Okay. And you yell out, Hey, everyone, listen up. People are going to look for a second and then go on with their, go on with their day. Okay. And then now let's say you go to the same bus stop. It's crowded. <laughs> it's crowded. But then now you say, Hey, John, let's say there's four Johns in the building and they all look at you. Okay. So when you're calling out a specific person, that specific person will respond. It's a very important lesson, okay? I know it's twisted because there's more people who you could be selling to. Oh, my God, what about all these other people? Yes, but you can actually make more doing the contrary, okay? So number two, you're, you're going to actually have to charge less. So non-specialists have to charge less for the same or equivalent service, okay? So if you're coming in and you're doing this unspecialized approach, helping anyone do anything, it's not specialized. It's not unique. It's the same thing. It's just... You know, you're going to have to charge low for it. The number three, you're going to have to be viewed. You're, you're not viewed as a commodity because you help everyone. The market will now view you as disposable and replaceable. Okay. So you could even make a parallel to like medicine, for example, you know, like specialists in medicine who are cardiovascular surgeons, they're paid 600, 700, $800,000 a year. Compare that to a general practitioner, general, sorry, a general physician. They're making like what? hundred to 200 K a year. Right. So those general physicians are viewed as disposable while the cardiovascular specialists are viewed as, you know, uncommoditized, you know, specialists, right? So the more specialized you are, the better you'll be treated, the more you'll be able to charge. And number four, your clients won't get good results. Okay. Your clients will have a low emotional investment due to price and lack of specialty and therefore will not take the process hundred percent seriously. Okay. Think about the online program Beachbody. So there's this program Beachbody on Demand. Okay, if, if you want to look them up, Beachbody on Demand. I can just look it up right now. It's like <coughs> it's like one of the largest um, online kind of training services. It's like really cheap, super cheap. Okay, you can look them up. Um, oh, I, did, I didn't share my tab, but I just I just crossed over. Okay, that's fine. Look them up, Beachbody on Demand. Um, that's super cheap. And the programs with that, like Beachbody on Demand, the success rate is like less than 2%. Why is that? It's because Beachbody on Demand is cheap and literally targets everybody. Okay. So that stuff doesn't work. They're like, the more someone spends with their money, the more they're going to enjoy that process and take it seriously. Okay. If I spend $100 on a steak, I'm going to sit and eat that steak very slowly. I'm going to enjoy every bite. And I'm probably going to be like, wow, this is a great steak. And then if I, <laughs> go and get a $5 steak. I'm going to be like, whatever, leave half on the plate, whatever. Okay. And there's actually studies that show that we actually build the perception of value in our mind more than the actual absolute value. So in a lot of cases, relative value is more important than absolute value. Okay. So that's number four. Number five, you're going to have to create new systems and processes for each client and goal that the client has. If someone wants to lose weight for a bodybuilding show, will have a different protocol than someone who wants to gain 100 pounds because they're anorexic. This takes time to create, okay? So let's say you have this person coming in and they want to <coughs> lose weight for a bodybuilding show 
and this person wants to gain weight because they're anorexic, you're going to have to make a different program and have different check-ins and then have to remember that and then track their progress differently. If you have the same kind of person doing the same thing, like you have a hundred dads all wanting to lose 50 pounds, it's just so straightforward. Your systems don't change. Everything is so simple. It makes the back end so easy because now you're able to build one system once that works with one sort of person. And then now it can be recycled with that one person a million times. You see how that works? Okay. So pretty much now you won't be able to validate your systems because you'll have so many clients each doing different things that you won't be able to validate one process. Okay. The only way you validate your systems are with data. You get data by working with clients, but if each client is different, your data is spread very thin. You want to dig deep with data, not dig out. <clears throat> okay. So if you have many people doing many different things, you're not able to validate if that process is actually working within that specific goal. Okay. Like you need specific amount of people doing a specific amount of thing so that you can see, okay, is this process working with, I'm going to test it with hundred people all doing the same thing. If you have so many different variables that you're testing for at the same time, the, the, the test pool gets all fucked up. Okay. And then pretty much what happens is you're not going to be able to validate the back end. You're not going to be able to validate your systems. People aren't going to get success. You're not viewed as a commodity. You're going to have to charge less. And then now you're going to lose doubt and confidence. And then pretty much this is what's happening with online trainers. They're helping everyone. They're becoming a commodity. The only way to escape is to be precise on the who. Okay. So <laughs> all online trainers are doing this. They're just super commoditized. Everyone's just helping everyone. Okay. So pretty much what happens when you, when you choose a person specifically is you choose a specific problem and a specific person and make it extremely narrow. Okay. So like I showed you up here, I gave you this example, um, these booty programs, these guys are going to crush. These guys probably are crushing already. Like this Brian guy, he's probably doing semi-decent. He's probably making a, a little bit of money. Okay. I, I don't doubt that he's making less than 20, maybe 30 K a month. Okay. So you choose a specific pr person and problem and make it extremely narrow. People will automatically view you. People will automatically view you as an expert because you are so precise. Okay. So it doesn't matter if I know a lot about markers, if every single piece of content I make or all I talk about is just markers, then you're going to start to be like, okay, this guy maybe knows something about markers. Okay. So it doesn't actually matter how much I know. It's just specifically what I'm directing my energy towards it frames me as an authority in that field. Okay. Number three, you'll have an easier time getting clients. You are calling on a specific person rather than 35. I gave you that example of the bus stop. Okay. You're at a bus stop and you, and you yell, Hey, John, John's going to respond <laughs> instead of like, Hey people. Right. So we're hoping to get fewer people who are precise. Okay. Number four, you'll be able to charge more. You are now the specialist. You don't get paid for what you do, but rather how you do it. You can put together a multi four figure package and sell them easily. Okay. You will be able to charge more a hundred percent of the time. Okay. And if they say, Hey, why do you charge so much? Well, I only help people who are 35 and want to lose a uh, pound, lose 30 pounds because their wife wants them to look sexy. Oh, that's super special. That's super unique. Yeah. That's what, that's why I charge so much. Boom. Done. Okay. You'll have better client results. People will be more invested because they no longer view you as a commodity. They'll be more invested in the process and do everything to completion because it's specialized. They're paying more higher emotional investment. They're going to do everything to completion. Okay. Number six, you will be able to figure out an exact system that you can build once for your one type of client and use it with every single client. No longer wasting time creating new plans for each client. You'll be able to validate one system and continually refine it. Okay. The system will quickly be the best in the space because you have refined it so much with one person. If I'm a spine surgeon and I do 10,000 spine surgeries, I will have a better system to do that one process rather than doing hundreds of different procedures. Like what Bruce Lee says, you practice one kick 10,000 times rather than 10,000 kicks one time. Okay. So that is going to allow you to refine one system with one client and quickly make it better each time. Keep refining, refining, refining until you can onboard someone. And it is just so easy. Okay. There's literally zero fulfillment. <coughs> 
All right, number seven, you'll be able to leverage your money and client results to scale your company, processes, client base, software, media, production quality, everything, employees, to make everything better as a whole. Because you're having more money, you're a specialist, everything is coming back in now, and your company is scaling up, okay? So this is what happens when you actually pick markets correctly, okay? The reason I showed you this is because I want you to use this example hypothetically. There's hundreds of other examples, thousands potentially, okay, of sub-niched markets who help specific people do specific things that are ready to take off that people haven't jumped into yet. So I'm just giving you an example of this because I honestly think that this is a very interesting market to jump into, okay? So now I'm going to share with you actually how to identify markets because we know why we need to identify markets. We know why we need to be specialized. 100% we need to be specialized. But there still comes a point where we have to pick a specific market that will actually work, okay? So even if you pick a specialized market that is just shit, it's not going to work. It has to be an actual decent market. And this is how you're going to do it. It's a pretty much a four-step process. I'm going to jump into it right here, okay? So step one is pretty much supply and demand. It's super straightforward, okay? With supply and demand, what happens is... Um, you want the demand to be higher than the supply, okay? So what happens pretty much um, is the market will pretty, you, you'll be able to see if a market is something that has a lot of supply, therefore a lot of competitors supplying things, okay? Or it doesn't, okay? And if it doesn't, but the demand is high, then that's something that you want to jump into, okay? If everyone wants this marker, but there's only two of them in the world, this marker is going to be worth $100 million, right? So a large part, and people don't really want to talk about this, is identifying supply and demand, okay? So for example, if this green arrow represents demand and this red arrow represents supply, think about it kind of like a buoyancy scale, okay? This is a balanced supply and demand um, spread. Okay. If it's a balanced market, okay, the supply is held for the demand. Okay. And the demand is held for the supply. It's very straightforward. For example, the car market, the demand is pretty constant with the car market and the supply is pretty constant. Therefore, it's balanced. Okay. Uh, what's another example? For example, maybe the, maybe the camera market. Okay. There's, you know, there's cameras that are supplied and the demand is pretty constant. The demand is not like super small. The demand is not super high. It's kind of like the car. It's the same, right? Boom. Okay. Number two is an imbalance. Okay. So this is called a winning market. So this is when you have more demand than actual supply. Okay. Um, so pretty much imbalance. So this is pretty much a winning market. Okay. And what happens in this case is... When you identify this, you are going to be probably one of the only people on earth that identifies this. So if I give you an example, I can't, <laughs> right? The example I would give you would be the one above, right? With the booty stuff, that stuff, right? There's not a lot of supply, but the demand is de pretty decent, okay? Um, so that's a winning market. If you're able to have this spread, right? Then you're able to jump in and then actually provide a level of supply to the demand, but that demand is already there. So you're not finding demand. You are just fulfilling demand. That's a big one. Okay. And then number three, this is an imbalance. This is when the supply is actually higher than the, than the demand. <laughs> and this is a hyper competitive market. This is something you want to steer clear of. Okay. So for example, like make money online sort of stuff, drop shipping, uh, real estate agent stuff. Like, like, for example, everyone I know who's like in between the ages of about like 20 and 30, everyone wants to be a real estate agent. And there's so many agents flooding into the space constantly and so many are getting destroyed. Okay. Therefore, the supply is much higher than the actual demand for real estate agents. Okay. So even drop shipping, right? Drop shipping was so big in 2016, 2015. And the, there were so many drop shipping things and all this sort of coaching spaces within drop shipping. And then now it's just bye-bye, okay? So you want to be in this imbalanced state where you can actually identify a market that's winning um, and actually provide that supply, okay? So that's step one, supply and demand. A lot of people don't really talk about this, 
but you need to identify this number one. Okay. And then step two, once you've identified a market that potentially has an imbalance, that is the most important. I'm just going to put this. This is the most important. If you have a market that is imbalanced, then your pricing doesn't really matter. Um, a lot of stuff don't really matter because this force kind of just takes over. Okay. And all the other forces succumb to it. So pretty much step two and also in importance would be who can afford. Okay. So let's say market one um, is poor. So they don't have that much money. Okay. They want and need your service badly. The demand is higher than the supply. Okay. But 85% cannot afford to pay your price. <coughs> okay. 85 cannot percent cannot afford to pay your price. So like, it doesn't really matter because you're, you're, your, your market is kind of shot because they just can't afford. Okay. And then if you take market two, for example, they want and need your service badly. The demand is higher than the supply, but 85% can afford your service easily. They have money. Okay. So if the, it doesn't matter how much demand or, you know, supply there is for demand there is in the market, if the market cannot afford the service, it kind of sublimates the fact of this. Okay. Even though this is super important. And if people have a demand high enough, they will find the money. Like look at drug addicts. They'll pay $400, $500 a month for cocaine, even if they're addicted. Yes. But having a market that has money is also hyper important. Okay. So for example, I launched an offer to people starting out that were making $5,000 or to people starting out that, you know, it was $5,000. Like this was the price of my program. Okay. Um, and these people really had no, they didn't have that much money. Okay. And what I realized is a lot of people had a million and one objections for me because they just didn't have money to spend. They didn't have $5,000 to spend. Okay. And then I launched another offer to people <coughs> already making over $10,000 a month. Um, and people had little price objections because they're already making money and they just see the value and then it's there. Okay. So if you're going step two in identifying market is identifying a market that actually has a level of money or capital, especially if you're charging high ticket for a coaching program, like four five, six thousand dollars $6,000, you need someone who actually has money. So in fitness, if you are going after teenagers who want to put on muscle, they're not going to be able to spend $5,000 on a fitness program. Compare that to dads who are working white collar jobs who sit all day. That's a lot different. They can afford that. Okay. And then step three, this is a very important one as well, is can you actually find these people? Okay. So 80% of actual marketing is simply locating the client you want to target. If there's a bottleneck in this location process, then even with the best marketing processes or ads or videography, you will lose. You need to be able to target the people and then actually present them a message. Your message doesn't matter if you can't present or find these people. Okay. When I first started in the fitness space, I wanted to help gyms and supplement companies. So that was my goal. I was like gyms or supplement companies, something like that. Uh, and then I quickly realized that supplement companies were impossible to find. Like, what am I going to reach out and send them a cold DM? Like, I can't really reach them. Like, I couldn't reach these people. I couldn't find them. And then even if I got in, I'm reaching like a social media manager. Okay. I'm not reaching like an owner or like a, 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 a branch owner or something like that. Okay. So then I realized, I was like, okay, supplement companies, gyms. And then I'm like, okay, why don't I just do gyms? Because I can look up gyms in my area and just cold call straight off of Google Maps. So that's what I did. And they were so easy to find. It made it really easy for me to jump into helping gyms. Okay. So this is a very big step. Can you find them? A lot of people, for example, they're focusing on helping, you know, certain clientele that's just impossible to find. And you, you have to be able to locate these people because 80% of your marketing processes is locating, targeting. Okay. If your targeting is subpar, your messaging doesn't matter. Okay. Because you have to get precision with that. Okay. And then step four, this is just the last step is trial and error. So understanding chaos and the unpredictability of testing. When I was first starting in the coaching space, I was a pure speculator. Okay. So I actually did all the research and actually overanalyzed. And there pretty much comes a point where you just need to begin client acquisition processes and move forward. Okay. You are, like, we can do all this speculation together and this stuff is hyper important, but once you pretty much select two or three to test, you have to take action. You have to move towards it. Okay. So most people will just research and contemplate their entire, you know, for several months and then take action. This was like me. 
And then winners will just research and contemplate, find the markets, spend a day on it, whatever, and then take action. So when I was first starting actually within the like gym space and the supplement space, it took me six months of like speculating pretty much. I was like taking courses, I was watching videos, I was taking notes, I was reading books, and I wasn't actually taking any action or making any money. Um, and the reason I, I did that because I was in this like research contemplation mode and I wasn't actually getting anywhere, okay? My action was little. And I didn't really, like, I was stuck in that rut. And most people get stuck in that rut. So all the stuff that I'm talking about is important, but without action, you're never really going to jump anywhere, okay? So if you went, if you made it to the end of this video, um, and this kind of all made sense to you about why you need to pick a specific market, you know, or else you're going to be viewed as a commodity and you're not going to be able to actually make upwards of <laughs> $50,000 a month, okay? And then how you need to pretty much pick a sub-niche, expand, how to pick niches, supply and demand, who can afford, all this sort of stuff. If you watched all of this, okay, and you are wanting to start and select a market with me, okay, I have hundreds of markets that I've already tested within fitness, et cetera. This is just one of them that I know is going to do good. Or even if you're watching this and you're, and you're wanting to do this and start this up with me, partner with me and start up and become a booty doctor and sell to rich moms online, go down Book a call with me, okay? And we'll make it happen, okay? Enjoy your day. I hope this video provided a level of value. Watch this over. Make sure you understand four steps, supply and demand, who can afford, can you actually find these people, and then trial and error and testing and why you actually need to find a market, okay? Thanks for watching.